Goodbye, President Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> President Donald J. Trump. We'll jump right in. Okay, good. We had a couple polls we went over on the show, on our show, IRL. Young people, oh. surprisingly, immigration is a top issue for them now. And I know that you've said that there's going to be the largest deportation uh, effort yeah. uh, in your next term. How do we do? How do we do it? So millions and millions of people are coming into a country. Democrats are actually less concerned with immigration. In the past. Yeah. Anytime Tim Pool says something that like he, he sounds like he's referencing some kind of factual information or poll, I wouldn't trust it too much. And many of those people are coming from prisons. Many of those people, frankly, are murderers and mm -hmm. they're drug dealers and mm -hmm. uh, they're coming from mental institutions. Mm -hmm. And they're coming from places that is, that is that is that true? Is the like is there a significant portion of people coming up from the southern border who are escaped mental patient? Like I know all of these claims, you know, source, 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 right? I get it, but like that's such a comic book way of understanding immigration. Could murderers be coming up and drug dealers? Sure, I mean that's possible. Escaped mental patients? I don't know. <laughs> that seems pretty wild to me. And we have to get them out. No country can sustain what like we're going through. Mexican Arkham Asylum broke open, you know? Uh, Bane? Bane? He's Mexican. Mexican Joker. That would go so fucking hard. That's what, Me that's what Joker really needs to up his color game. He needs some kind of, like, Aztec Mesoamerican color scheme, you know? Uh, me, many of the libertarians here, we want to see firings. We want to see, in the bureaucracy, corrupt... Right. Uh, I, is Tim Pool still doing the like I'm a libertarian bit, even though he's agreed with basically every authoritarian crackdown, uh, like on a cultural and legal level? He's still doing that bit. Okay, cool. I just it's good to know he's still playing the classics. Without getting into the, spe uh, the specifics for obvious reasons, I just realized that he's not wearing his trademark gray beanie. He's wearing his dressy black beanie for the occasion. He's wearing like a black shirt and a black t-shirt with a black shirt over it and a black beanie to like. I don't know, look like a waiter at a skate park. <laughs> you know, I view the Libertarian Party as almost a party of common sense, largely of common sense. You want borders, but you want fairness. You want a lot of things. No, Libertarians shouldn't want borders. <laughs> That's like the main thing they shouldn't want. Yeah, man, I'm a Libertarian. I, I, I oppose, like, state overreach. Also, I think states should get to draw a hard line in the ground that arbitrarily des designate uh, you know, where people can go in their lives and all the rules that you follow will be like dictated by our monopoly on violence within this area. Yeah, man, I'm a libertarian. Yeah, man, we're libertarian guys. Of course we believe 90% of our limited tax dollars should go towards the military, police, and border patrol. Uh, perhaps there's a little bit of a biased interview, but I think you're the greatest president of my lifetime. Yeah. Glazing. Oh, I appreciate uh, it. And, I, and I like the pause afterwards, too, like he's waiting for the, the good boy points, the, the GBP, you know, that he can use to buy tendies after. We don't want to see wars. I don't want to see wars. I was in no wars other than we finished a war with ISIS and we completed it. You continued the occupation of Afghanistan and the drone strikes and OK, whatever. When you look at Ukraine, that would have never happened if I were president. You look at the October 7th attack on Israel, it would have never happened. He loves never elaborating, too. On when he says stuff like this, he's just like, yeah, like by sheer psychic force, I would have willed it to not happen, you know, from the from the Astronomicon, my like will from the throne, I would have simply like suppressed the violent intentions of the Russians and of Hamas. It's like, how would you have prevented it in any way? Of course, like in in reality, by the way, if Trump had been president, so October 7th would have happened no matter what. But with I think it would have happened exactly the same way. But with Trump as president, the past term. I think that not only would the Russian invasion of Ukraine have happened, but Trump would have basically defended it. Uh, and he definitely would not have contributed to giving weapons to Ukraine. This guy, like, tr Trump's campaign was just, like, saturated with Russian influence in 2016. It's not a conspiracy theory, you know. In spite of its consistent discrediting, the Senate Intel Committee published extensive information on the degree of collaboration and infiltration and corruption in that line you know like the it, it, like i i fully think that ukraine would have been conquered by now you know there would be no war currently with russia and ukraine because russia would have won by now recently they're dropping bombs all over yemen uh, you don't have to do that you can talk in such a way where they respect you and they listen to you Vic you want to talk to the houthis i mean don't get me wrong, I'm I'm open to the idea. Yeah, no, go yeah. Hell yeah, man. 
we're we're gonna it's it's gonna be like outflanking from the left in his in his pursuit of being perceived as like an isolationist. He's going to make friends with the Houthis. It's gonna be great. Didn't he give arms to the Saudis to do that in Yemen? Y yes, yes. The, there's the there's no there's no consistent underlying ideology here. That was one of the most consistent uh, features of the Trump administration is big talk. But he was never competent enough to actually do anything differently. So a lot of the stuff he just kept status quo. He was never that I think is one of the reasons why Project 2025 was being laid out by Republican operatives early. It's because they want to lay the groundwork in case Trump does win, because they know that if he wins without any kind of like prior uh, preparedness, they wouldn't be able to capitalize on his victory because he's not competent enough to quickly change course, you know? He said the problem the world has is that Donald Trump is no longer president. When he was president, mm -hmm. China didn't play around, Russia didn't play around, nobody played around, and we had no problems. Today, the whole world is on fire. We had unicorns, there were leprechauns around every street corner. There's a conversation from a phone call where you said that there was a... They maybe thought there was a 5% chance you'd nuke them. That's well. And so they kept, they kept them in line. Man. It's kind of scary to think about, but you take a look at the weakness we have now with... Uh, wait, uh, wait. I love you, Trump, because you're an isolationist who doesn't get us involved in foreign wars, but also I'm glad that there was an implicit threat that you would nuke the nuclear-armed... What are these guys? There's no consistency at all! At all! It's like, yeah, man, all these other Republicans, these rhinos and Democrats just want, like, you know, foreign conquest and and and, and they keep the the perpetual war going. Now, me, big boy Trump, what I do is I threaten nuclear Armageddon. That's how you keep peace. What do you... They're not saying anything. They're just yapping. These limp-dicked signifiers towards isolationism and libertarian values when you're an expansionist fascist, it has to get tiring, right? Do you think Tim Pool ever gets tired of the bit where it's like, hey, as a libertarian who loves freedom, here's 57 consecutive pro-war, like, brutish, domineering, strongman fascist talking points? Like, like it's got to get tiring, right? You crossed the demilitarized zone into North Korea with no security as a sign of goodwill and peace with an, uh, the hostile nation. I don't wanna, I don't wanna burst Tim Pool's bubble, but uh, he does know that there, there was in fact security there, right? It was the DMZ. That is the area with the most security on earth. Like saying, uh, yeah, I went to the DMZ with no security is like saying, yeah, you went to like the police station without a security detail. Like, okay, I feel like they had that covered for you at the location. Guys, I'm really not trying to burst Tim's bubble here, but I think all of these serious looking men in suits might be security. Uh, that guy, that guy. These people, this guy, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure they're all security. And you know what's crazy? Nothing happened after this. Like, Donald Trump brags about this, like this was a big, uh, peace win, you know, like for stabilizing tensions. Nothing happened. North Korea has continued to do the exact same shit afterwards that they did before. It accomplished literally nothing. What has changed after this? My relationship with him, as you know, was very hostile. Little rocket man and all yeah. that. But then all of a sudden it morphed. He respected me. I respected him. And we ended up, once we got to know each other, we ended up very good. A very smart guy, very strong guy. He's the absolute leader of that country. You know, for those that think it's, he's... Mm, I want, man, it's, it sure is very telling that the first compliment Trump thinks of about every dictator he interacts with is it sure is admirable how this guy is a dictator, you know? Uh, I got along with him great. We had no nuclear war. You would have had a nuclear war guaranteed. And you won't, if, look, if we have the right president, if we have somebody that knows what he's doing. Does he genuinely believe what he's saying? I think he does. Yes, I think he does. I think that, I think Donald Trump is a very um, unintrospective person and that he believes a lot of the stuff that he says because he's borderline delusional. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Really appreciate that was fantastic. As bad as expected. I had fun. You know, let's not be negative.